welcome to part two of this video series where we are talking about redefining and revamping our child's play space at home if you miss seeing part one i'm going to put it down below for you guys so have a look at that and then join us for video two before we move on to video two let's recap quickly what we learned in video one number one we spoke about a very effective way of tackling the toy mess the konmari way next we also learned about the three r system in that we spoke about r is for recycle repurpose reuse R is also for rotation and R is also for ready. Today we are going to talk about simple yet effective ways of storing and organizing the toys that we have so lovingly decided to keep. Alright, so I'm going to share some of my favorite ideas that we have really found useful over the last few years. We don't have a separate playroom for my son, so here's what I've done. Number one, we have few of his absolute favorite toys in our front room. Number two, we have a small Montessori shelf set up for him in one of our bedrooms. And number three, rest all of the other toys are neatly stored and rotated as and when required. Now feel free to tweak these ideas as per your home setup and your child's interests. So number one, first thing, decide which are the toys that your child currently loves playing with. These are going to be your core or your main toys. Now think where and how you're going to display and store them. We will in detail talk about how to create that balance between the child's play space and our personal adult space in the concluding video that goes live in the next few days. But let me just give you one example. See if there's any hidden space like a TV trolley, drawers or pull out trolleys in which you can store your child's toys. This way the child can remove and play with the toys that he wants to and once he's done playing everything can go back in the hidden drawers and you can enjoy the calmness and quietness of that adult space too. So let me show you the kind of toys that we have for my son in the front room so when i open this drawer uh, we have most of his cars and train tracks and i have compartmentalized them by keeping them in different baskets or boxes or trays so that way it's easier for my son to play with and tidy it up once he's done playing I also like to keep an empty box or container because that encourages the child to come up with his own creations and imaginative ideas. So here's a fun tip for you. Add an empty box or two in order to encourage open-ended play. Next, since my son loves unstructured play, we have two drawers here with his wooden building blocks, magnetiles, Legos, lots of animals and rainbow stackers. Here let me give you a quick tip number two and that is have baskets or trays to store toys by category so that it's easier for the child to access it. I have a confession to make here. Till about last year, I used to compartmentalize my son's animals. So all the sea animals went in one basket, the wild ones in others, so on and so forth. But what I eventually realized is that my son loves to jumble them all up in his free play. So now we don't have any categories. They all stay mixed up in various baskets. So my tip number three for you all is you don't have to have a Pinterest worthy storage system. Have a system that is simple, that is functional and something that works for your child. Moving on, if you have a separate playroom or a little bit of space at your home, you can create a simple zone like this. A shelf is a great addition to keep your children's toys and activities. I have observed that a shelf always brings in a lot of focus and joyful learning in little children. With my son, he likes to keep back his activity trays once he's done using them because it looks so very simple for the child to tidy up. So that's one option you can have. Again, please don't invest in a shelf if you're not sure about it. For about two years, I was using my son's wardrobe and a part of our TV trolley as our shelf. So my tip number four for you guys is it need not be fancy. It need not be a big investment. Make do with what you have and keep it real. As you can see from this video, we have marks all over the wall. We have scratches on his table and that's real 
simple life guys that just shows that the child is learning he's exploring he's messing up but where he's playing too we also have a little basket over here for his ball few puppets and soft toys he absolutely loves open-ended play dramatic play storytelling so this is a perfect addition and lastly let me show you how we rotate his toys so most of his shelf activities and learning supplies are kept in these boxes as you can see and down below we have a basket of few of his toys and busy bags so these are rotated after every three to four weeks let me give you a closer look at each of these baskets so here we have his world map work then a barbecue station that he got for his i think fourth birthday a toolkit which he absolutely loves using even now then we have his pattern blocks and tiles of melissa and duck and then a couple of busy bags we also have his nativity set that we use during the christmas time and also a britain play farm set his britain play kitchen sets are stored in these see-through bags his wooden puzzles and jigsaw puzzles are stored in these two boxes i've also stored his pink tower and it's so funny because i had actually removed it from this box to donate it uh, and my son saw it and he played with it non-stop for one hour so i think toy rotation is such a magical thing to do so anyway for his jigsaw puzzles instead of stacking them in boxes here's what i do i put them all in small little ziploc baggies and the reference images are cut and kept so my son can refer to the image and solve the puzzle so that way it's totally a space saver and over here we have most of his wooden puzzles and Montessori puzzles. This box stores all of our language and pre-writing supplies. So we have our sandpaper letters, metal insets, a couple of flashcards, not many, and just a few pre-writing works. This is the box where we store all our Montessori printables. I also have a couple of Ziploc bags and pouches here. So once he's done with the printables on the shelf, I put them in these bags. Uh, so here we have a lot of you know printables that we're going to use for the entire year few of his coloring books because he loves drawing and coloring right now and just few you know very interest-led activity sheets this box over here has cultural science and math supplies so we have few works here for our india unit study we also have some safari tubes in here and then we have some Montessori math supplies for hands-on work. And lastly, we have a box with some of his sensorial items and materials. Here we have 3D geometric solids, then a pouch for nature study, which has tongs and magnifying glasses. We have interlocking blocks. Again, a great work for independent play. And then we have the transparent geometric shapes and few Easter eggs. So in conclusion, here are a few things that we all can keep in mind. Number one, have few interest-led toys out for your child to play and explore. Remember, when it comes to toys, less is always more. So fewer toy options means that the child will play better and for longer. Next, it always helps to compartmentalize the different set of toys by keeping them in baskets or trays number three toy rotation and i feel this is a complete game changer so you can have select amount of your child's current favorite toys outside and rest can all be stored away once your child is bored with the toys that are outside you can swap them up you can use clear storage bins ziplocs baggies pouches or baskets to store the toys I also like to keep an empty basket in our front room and this is like a toy cleanup basket. So all the toys that are not tidied up over the day are put in this basket and at the end of the day I just return everything back to its place. I would love 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 to see how you are storing and organizing your children's toys so feel free to share photos of those on my facebook group also don't forget to check out yulia's detailed blog on toy storage and organization her blog link will be in the description box below. Found this part too useful if you did don't forget to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to my channel if you still haven't so that i can catch you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching bye for now